Welcome to Good Morning Loughborough. I'm Rachel. And I'm Raphael. And this is what's coming up on today's show. Coming up, Anna gives us a rundown of student housing within Loughborough. And Sophie introduces us to Shakespeare Society, followed by an exclusive monologue from one of his greats. But first, is your university workload very stressful to deal with? Maybe joining a society could help you. We'll be speaking to Lawrence to find out his experiences with the Stage Society. So hi, my name is Lawrence. I study mechanical engineering and I'm in my second year. So I'm part of LSU Stage Society, which basically puts on shows and musicals uh, for people to get involved in. Uh, in the past, we've put on two plays and a musical per semester. This year, we're changing things up a bit, so we're doing a musical uh, cabaret showcase sort of thing, a play, and doing some short films that people are getting involved in. It's basically a society for everyone who wants to get involved with performance. So our cabaret involves um, lots of songs from different musicals that different people are performing, either small groups, duets, or solos. Um, and uh, this cabaret we're doing, we're calling it miscast, which basically means that it's a song that you wouldn't normally sing in a show, for example, someone of the opposite gender or of a different age, etc. Um, so I'm directing that uh, along with someone else, and uh, it's been a really fun experience. Um, it's been a lot of work, but it's been great fun to work with uh, everyone else in the society. That will be on the 13th of December in the lounge in the Students' Union, and it's uh, an unticketed event, so you can just come along. Good morning, Laura Lawrence. Thank you very much for joining us today. Good morning. It's great to be here. <laughs> so, your second year? Yes, right? I'm second year. So, how did you find the increase of workload compared um, from the first year to the second year? I found that there has been a big step up. Uh, I've got more lectures to go to. The content is harder, of course. Um, so yeah, but at the same time, although it is harder, I've learnt from last year, so I have got mm -hmm. a bit stronger, if you know what I mean. So yeah. it's manageable. Nice. Yeah. And what else do you do alongside your academic studies? Um, so I'm part of the um, Stage Society at Loughborough. Um, so at the moment, uh, I'm currently directing um, one of the shows we're doing, which is a, um, a cabaret, which is basically a oh. performance of lots of different musical numbers. Um, performed by lots of different people. There's group numbers, there's solos. Um, so yeah, I've been helping direct and choreograph that, which has been great fun. Well, that, that must yeah. be very exciting. Yeah, it's so pretty exciting. what do you like about performing, and in this case, stage society, because you're in stage society? Yeah, I think I've always loved performing, uh, and I grew up loving it, and I think it's just, it's a great way to sort of um, really express yourself and release yourself, whether you're stressed or whether uh, you're having a bit of a bad day, just performing or rehearsing with other people just really makes you light up and that's what I love about it. Definitely, yeah. Did you come to university thinking, yeah, this is definitely a society I'm going to get in with from, Absolutely. from the start? Yeah. I was researching about it before I came because I knew that I definitely wanted uh, theatre to be a part of my university experience, yeah. So, um, besides cabaret that you just mentioned, what kind of other events are you involved in, say, society? Um, so that's the only event that I'm involved to, involved with this semester. Um, and then next semester, I think we're hoping to do a musical, which hopefully I'll wow. be involved with. Um, and in terms of what we've done before, obviously last year was a bit weird um, because of the pandemic, but we still managed to do virtual events. So we took part in the uh, Inter-University Musical Theatre Festival, where we performed a pre-recorded uh, group number, duet, and solo. Uh, so I sang the duet, and I also choreographed the um, uh, group performance, which was great fun. Do you have any yeah. favourite musical in particular? Oh, there's a question. So, I know it's, such it's a, a question. question. It's a question. I'm and a musical theatre like yeah. lover as um, well, so I know I know the struggle. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I could name you quite a few favourites. Wicked, definitely. Oh, um, love Wicked. Yeah, everybody's talking about Jamie. I love, um, yes. and I have to put Oliver in there because I grew up with Oliver, so Ooh, that's yeah. in there. Definitely, yeah. And Matilda. I mean, we won't go oh, on. The list could go on. The list could go on and on and on. <laughs> yeah. So now that you, of course, you are an arts lover, a theatre yeah. lover, do you think promoting arts and theatre and performing is something important? 
Yeah, I think it's, um, it depends on the person, but I think it's really important uh, for lots of people. So for me personally, as I said, it's my method of sort of release um, from stress or anger or whatever, and it just gives me such a fulfillment. And I think it's such, uh, so important to promote these things because there will be lots of other people in the same boat uh, who feel the same way. And it's just great to give them opportunities like this, not only to do what they love, but it's also a great way to meet new people and work with others. And yeah. Definitely, yeah. Um, what's your favorite thing about performing? Um, I think just the feeling that it gives me, the, the feeling of having everyone looking at you being like, wow, he's, uh, he's doing something great, or well, hopefully, <laughs> if they like it. But um, yeah, I just love sort of uh, being on stage, being present, performing something, and then everyone applauding, taking it mm -hmm. all in. It's just such a great, great feeling. Wonderful. Could you just yeah. remind people at home, when is it going to cabaret? Um, when is the cabaret going to be? Yeah, so the cabaret is on the uh, 13th of December. It's at uh, 7 p.m., I believe, in the lounge in the Students' Union and it's unticketed, so you can just show up. Yeah. yeah. Well, don't miss it. Don't miss it at home. Thank no, you very much, Lawrence, for joining us today. Thank you we very much. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Still to come, an interview and performance from some members of the Shakespeare Society. You might find yourself in the process for looking for accommodation for the next academic year. We all know that this can be a very difficult process to go through. And so joining us now is Anna, a student who is going to talk to us about her experiences finding accommodation in Loughborough. Uh, my name is Anna Xidi. I study marketing and management and I'm a first year currently. What got me interested in talking about housing is that I found that it can be very, very difficult to find the groups of people that you want to live with, if you want to go back to halls, if you actually want to go find a house in town, um, just a variety of things like that. It can be re really, really stressful, especially since you have so many students doing it at the same time. So you kind of see a lot of students um, and a lot of your friends already having found houses. Meanwhile, you haven't even started to talk about it, and that can be very stressful, and it can feel like a very big pressure on your shoulders. So um, that is why I think I would like to talk about it today. Something that I would like to see different between the housing that we have currently as halls in the university is um, I think it would be better for the reception to be able to um, fully cater to your needs. So for example, I had an issue with my door that still hasn't been resolved when we're almost done with the first term. Um, I think that that would be pretty important and I feel like in a housing situation things would move a lot more quickly than they do in halls. I think that ideally we would all like to live in a huge castle with our own ensuite bathroom, not having to share with anyone, with our own little fridge. Um, <laughs> but obviously we have to um, understand that we are just students and we do have a price limit and we have to know what is actually doable and what we can receive at the stage we are in now in our lives. Hi Anna, thanks so much for coming in today. Thanks for so much for having me. So, uh, first question I guess, where did you live in first year? In halls or private accommodation and how did you find the process for finding that? that? Well, I lived in halls first year in the accommodation, so it was honestly fine. The process was very simple. The university sort of guided me throughout the whole thing. Um, it was very nice and simple. Um, I could talk to people and I could send emails if there were any questions that I had. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm staying in Telford Hall still because I'm in first year, so yeah. And so what do you think is the most difficult part when it comes to find housing and accommodation for students? Um, I think that the most difficult part, I'm currently I'm in the process of finding mm -hmm, housing mm -hmm. for a second year and I think that the most difficult part is um, sorting out who you're going to live with because obviously when you're friends with a lot of people um, it can be very difficult to sort out who's going to live with who. A lot of people mm -hmm. can tend to feel left out if you forget about someone um, and so in return people tend to not really speak up about it that much. Um, it's sort of a um, it's something that people don't talk about that much and all of a sudden it just happens and you hear all of these people who are going through this process um, and some people by the time you start even like discussing it with your friends some other people may have already found houses and have it booked so it can be really stressful. What would make that process easier? 
Um, I think it just kind of goes back to what I said before. I think it would be easier for people to speak up about it more, um, to make things a little bit more clear so that everyone can gain a better understanding so that if, you know, touch wood, something does happen and someone is left out, they can just go and figure out their own way instead of being led on, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and talking about you, your personal experience, you said you had help, you could send emails, and so you had support. So, do you think students are given enough support? Um, I in think general? that students are given enough support when it comes to accommodation inside the university. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, they're not given as much support when it comes to housing. And obviously, only 30% of second and third year students return to halls, mm -hmm. which means that there's 70% of students who are looking for housing completely on their own which I think the university should help with a little bit more, but at the same time, it is other companies that take care of that rather than mm -hmm. the university. So I sort yeah. of understand. Yeah. Do you have any advice for first or second years looking for housing for the next academic year? Um, I would say that they should consider all of their options. There is accommodation inside the university, There's, which is very convenient. It's close to all of your lectures. You can make a lot of friends. Um, there's private accommodation outside of the university, which is also organized like mm -hmm. that. And then there's housing. Um, the only thing that I would say is to make sure to look at everything because a lot of first year students tend to ignore the fact that there also is private accommodation in, if, they, if they like halls, but also want to be in town. They tend to forget mm -hmm. about that a little bit. Yeah. So you just mentioned you're looking for accommodation for next year. Yeah. What are you really looking for? Um, I really like the halls scenario, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I would also like to live in town. So I am looking at private accommodation in town. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. We wish me. you all the luck. Thank you. We wish you all the luck. Thank you very much for coming today. Our next guests are Sophie and Emily, two members of the Shakespeare Society. We already have here Sophie and Emily from the Shakespeare Society. Welcome. Oh, thanks. Thank it's great you. to be here. Thank you very much for joining Good. us today. So, how do you got into Shakespeare Society? Oh, well, for me, so I'm a third year. First year, they were playing Macbeth, which you just saw. And I was like, do you know what? I quite like Macbeth. I never got a um, main role in school. So I was like, let's try it one last time. And I ended up being Macduff. And it was just really great, like mm -hmm. really great people and a great atmosphere that we really loved. What about you? I'm just attending like um, the um, bazaar and um, Freshers Bazaar, and I saw met the people there. They seemed mm -hmm. really friendly and nice. And I heard they were doing the Tempest, and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, this is going to be good. So, <laughs> tended, um, attended the um, backstage meeting, met up with people. Really great fun. She's have a you... blessing to have. <laughs> I was like, I've, I've got something excited. That's great, guys. And like, you know, it's all good. <laughs> it's always good when you find them yeah. keynotes right early I'm, on. Yeah, honestly, blessing, Definitely. blessing. Yeah, good thing you got her in first year as well. You got oh her yeah, the rest get of the time. I mean, yeah. I'm good stage, but it's like you know, you can do some. You'll do stage and Shakespeare, but like, I'm like, come on, like, 
Shakespeare guys, that was cool looking <laughs> thing, you know? That was actually quite good, you know? Oh. <laughs> Have you guys got a favourite memory from your time in the society? Oh, so, in Macbeth, um, I had this really cool scene where we had like these swords and we had to do like sword training for them, like properly, which I was like, okay, not expecting this. And um, we did that and just performing on stage and the dramatic lights and then hearing like it all done and you went backstage and all your friends were there and they're like, this is a great show, should we go have a party? And you're like, yeah, and we've done it. So that was amazing and I can't wait to do that this year as well like after covid you know for me again can't mm. wait yeah now i'm just i'm just curious do you have a favorite shakespeare play that's a difficult question yeah definitely i think mine has to be hamlet i think the complexities oh, of it yeah. and especially in the iconic um soliloquy scene i think it's so contemporary and relevant and I think it's just superb. I mean, most of his mm -hmm. works are. Yeah, I mean, anything with a bit of murder in, you know, a little bit of, <laughs> a bit of drama. a little bit of romance. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, that's why, like, they're so good at modern adaptations, like, She's the Man, yes. or, like, and Taylor Shoe and Ten Things I Hear About You. They're, it's modern, like, it can be, even though people don't think it is, <laughs> but it can be. <laughs> Which play are you guys working on this year? So we're actually working on The Tempest. Um, I'm directing it, which is amazing, and it's been performed on the 14th and 15th and 16th of December. Really close, really exciting, great cast, and yeah, that's our this term semester. But we will be filming on another play. Mm -hmm. Romeo and Juliet next semester. <gasps> I'm going to be part of directing and possibly producing, but it's going to be very exciting. Like passing on the mantle. I'm like, okay, guys, <laughs> yeah, so I've taught you well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be fun. Yeah. very exciting. Yeah, I mean, very, it's all good. Very go. exciting. It's all good. Of course, in the Shakespeare Society, do you consider acting as a possible future career? I would. I would love to, but it's something that you really need drive to do. Mm -hmm. You need to go like, okay, I'm going to go into acting. So maybe, you know, I've really enjoyed directing. It's, it's a bit of a stressful situation, but you're there with all your mates. So turning that into something professional, maybe, maybe not, but um, we'll just see what opportunities come up. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people are part of like the National Youth Theatre. So if you get in like, and you work towards it, I know some amazing actors at mm -hmm. uni and I've had the pleasure to work with some. So mm -hmm. people are going places, you know, watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Emily? Um, I mainly just kind of want to progress in backstage mm -hmm. and maybe kind of do part of the committee in the future, but really helping backstage mm -hmm. promote the society, especially. Yeah. Do you guys, are you, well, are you guys involved in anything else other than Shakespeare Society at uni? Um, as this and that, I did a bit of action projects and stuff, but mm -hmm. Chase has been like my main thing. And when you find, you know, a community of people, it's about 20 people Absolutely. in the society. So you go like, yeah, actually, we play like Dungeons and Dragons together. And we're like, <laughs> we're not that nerdy, but like you can be, you know. So it's just been great. Like I've really found that my home there. So it's really good. So when is your um, the Tempest, right? Yes. Tempest. When is it going to be? So the last um, last week of term, um, the thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth, I think. Um, but don't hold me. Well, <laughs> watch this space. <laughs> watch this space. We'll get it. Uh, no, just, just follow my social media, honestly. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, fine. <laughs> great. Thanks, guys, for coming in. Uh, I hope you've you enjoyed much. it. It must have been a bit of a different experience for you guys being on camera. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know. I haven't acted in ages. I mean, I was in that little clip. I was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> but I, was like, I can't let anybody know. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not. a little bit different now, so it's all good. Uh, thank you very much for coming. It was just wonderful to talk yeah. with you both. Thank you very much. Oh, cheers. Thank, yeah. you. thank you very much. <laughs> and that's everything we have for today's Good Morning Lofra. But before we go, we've got a live performance of Trinkolo's monologue by Louis Sait. Until next time, goodbye. Bye. Ah! Oh! Ah! 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 Oh! Well, here's neither bush nor shrub. Oh, to bear off any weather at all. Oh, and another storm brewing. Oh, I can hear it sing in the wind. Yon same black cloud, yon huge one. Oh, looks like a foul pump barn that would shed its liquor. Oh, if it should thunder as it did before. Oh, I know not where to hide my head. What have we here? A man? Or a fish? Dead? Or alive? Mm. A, a fish. Uh. Uh. It smells like a fish. A very, uh, ancient and, uh, fish-like smell. <laughs> the kind of, uh, 
The kind of not the newest, poor John. Oh, a strange fish. If I were in England, as once I was, and had this fish but uh, painted, well, <laughs> not a holiday fool, but uh, give a piece of silver. <laughs> Oh, legged like a man, and his fins like arms. <gasps> ah. Ah. <gasps> ah. Ah. <laughs> oh, warm my trough. I do now let loose my opinion. <laughs> Hold it in no longer. This is no fish, but an islander that hath lately suffered a thunderbolt. Oh, alas! Oh, the storm is back again! Oh, 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 my best way is to, to, uh, oh, to creep under his gabardine. Oh, there is no other shelter hereabouts. And uh, misery acquaints a man with uh, strange bedfellows. But, uh, oh, wow. Uh, I will here shroud uh, until the dregs of the storm be passed. <coughs> <coughs>